and we are back with the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this third segment, we're going to be doing a quick recap of all the NBA games that went down last night, starting with the Lakers going up against the Raptors. So the Lakers beat, beat the Raptors 128 to 111. Obviously, this Raptors team has sort of been tanking since losing Scotty Barnes, so they... There's no, there's no hope for them to make the playoffs right now. They got eliminated a while ago. If I'm just going to check the standings just to make sure, yeah, there's like, there's no way that they're gonna be able to make, to make the playoffs with the record that they have right now, even if they win out. So, again, like it makes sense that they're tanking, so that way, like they can get that draft pick. They are in the 12th seed, however, so it's in that. It's in that weird, like, middle area where it's like, again, you're losing a lot of games, but you're also winning enough games, so that way it prevents those players, or it prevents the team from getting a much higher draft pick than they would normally get. Because to start the season, like, with Scotty Barnes, they definitely, they definitely expected a lot more coming out of this roster, but... Regardless, like um, things happen, and Scotty Barnes, he led his he led the Raptors in every single statistical category, from points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks, and he was the only player in the league doing that for his team. So obviously, like him, them losing Scotty Barnes ultimately caused them to lose the season, and the Lakers right now they. They're 10 games positive, so I never, I did not expect the Lakers to be 10 games positive, and they are slowly creeping up to that eighth seed. Now, if they get to the eighth seed, that would mean they only have to play once in the play-in, and then they can make the playoffs as the seventh seed, which would, which would be a much better option for them unless the Nuggets end up falling down to the second seed. Because if the Nuggets fall down to the second seed, I think that's, the La- that's when the Lakers' journey ends. And I don't really... I see the Lakers being able to beat the Timberwolves and the, the Thunder, especially the Thunder with their lack of experience. But I do not see the Lakers beating the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets ended up sweeping the Lakers last year. And even though like it could be argued that the Lakers, they got better overall as a team... I don't think like the Nuggets are afraid of the Lakers as much as like the Thunder are afraid of the Lakers because the Lakers had beaten the Thunder in the regular season a couple times. So I feel like that that is the matchup that they're trying to avoid going up against the the Nuggets and it seems like the Nuggets are going to keep that one seed. So if things stay the way that they are right now and the Lakers move up to the 8th seed, there's a chance that they might not end up playing them if they could end up beating the Kings in the play-in. But looking at the box scores, D'Angelo Russell ended the game with 25 points and 7 assists. LeBron James ended the game with 23 points and 9 assists. Anthony Davis ended the game with 21 points and 12 rebounds. And Roy Hachimura ended the game with 14 points. And... Oh, there was also Max Christie who ended the game with 12 points. So overall, really solid production as a team coming in from the Lakers, which is what this team needs going into the playoffs. LeBron James shot 10 for 12 from the field. He's been shooting much more efficiently from the field. He also, for the first time, he's averaging a much better three-point percentage than Stephen Curry. And it's not by 0.1%. It's by a whole percent. And... Obviously, with like the reputation of LeBron being a um, a finisher around the rim more so than a shooter, compared to Steph Curry's image being more of a shooter, this is very impressive given how LeBron is doing this as the oldest player in the NBA. And like a lot of people don't really talk about that, but I feel like that's something that should be added onto his legacy because shooting better than the greatest shooter that the league has seen while you're the oldest player in the NBA, it's almost unheard of. And with this win, the Lakers, like, they continue their winning streak, and they, I believe it's the Mavericks that held their highest winning streak, but they ended up, speaking of the Mavericks, they ended up losing to the Golden State Warriors, 104 to 100. So we'll move on to that game right now. And the Warriors, yeah, they ended the game with um, Steph Curry only scoring 13 points, so... The fact that they were able to win with Curry scoring that few, like, such 
a low scoring game coming in from him, it definitely is something positive for this Warriors team because it shows that they're a lot deeper than their star player. And when their star player has a bad game, they can still find a way to win it in the end, especially against a, com a competitive team like the Dallas Mavericks. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Andrew Wiggins ended the game with 23 points. Chris Paul ended the game with 14 points and shot 6 for 11. Klay Thompson also ended the game with 14 points, 2 for 8 from 3. And Steph Curry, again, 13 points. Not a high-scoring game from Steph, but he didn't really need the scoring because the rest of the team ended up providing the points for him. So he got very lucky there that his performance didn't end up costing them. And Luka Doncic, he ended the game with 30 points, 11 assists, and 12 rebounds. So another triple-double coming in from Doncic. And there's, there's a chance that he could end up stealing the MVP from Jokic. Again, there's a chance. I don't think that that's what's going to happen as the season unfolds, but we'll see going on into the rest of the... It going on into the offseason and going on to when the awards show happens. But... We will see. Kyrie Irving ended the game with 27 points, had three steals, and didn't really get many rebounds or assists, but he did provide in terms of scoring. P.J. Washington ended the game with 20 points and five rebounds. Daniel Gafford ended the game with 10 points and eight rebounds. And again, that was really all, that was really it in terms of scoring for the Dallas Mavericks. So there was a lot more people scoring on the Warriors than there were for the Mavericks. I mentioned earlier that the, or I mentioned in a previous podcast that the lowest that the Golden State Warriors could go is losing out of the play-in and losing that spot to Houston. That's definitely like their lowest point. But so far with the wins that they've been able to get, it doesn't look like that that's going to happen. Again, we'll see. There's still a few more games left in the regular season. So we will see just how, just how the standings play out towards the end of the season. And for Dallas... I did say that their lowest point would be dropping all the way to the play-in and needing to play a couple of play-in games. But even when they do play those play-in games, I think the only team that they'd have to worry about is playing the Denver Nuggets. Because, again, I think the Mavericks are a good enough team to beat the Timberwolves. And, well, not the Timberwolves, but I think they're good enough to beat the Thunder because of the Thunder's lack of experience. So I feel like that's the matchup that if, they, if any team that's in that low seated area wants to go up against any team that's in the high seated area it's the thunder and with that in mind it's like right now the the Dallas the Dallas Mavericks like they are in the playoffs and they do hold that like fifth seed so they might not get that low to where they need to play those games but regardless as a fifth seed it looks like they could play the clippers and I really don't think that's something that the Mavericks want to do in the first round because if history repeats itself, then Luka Doncic is just going to lose to the Clippers yet again. Even though Luka Doncic, he plays very well against the Clippers, he never ends up winning the series in the end. And that's something that a lot of people forget. And that could cost them. So that could, that could be like their high point, just staying in the playoffs and then losing to the Clippers in the first round. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens to the Mavericks whatsoever. Now, the Heat, they ended up playing the Knicks last night. They ended up winning 109-99. to So I guess I was a little bit wrong for saying that the Miami Heat don't deserve to be in that top 11 spot because they ended up beating the Knicks, who were ranked just above them. Now, Josh Hart, he ended the game with only two points despite playing 46 minutes, so that didn't help much for the for the Knicks whatsoever. McBride, Miles McBride ended the game with 24 points. He also played 45 minutes, which is, again, a lot of minutes to stack onto one player. Jalen Brunson ended the game with 20 points and 10 assists. And DiVincenzo ended the game with 31 points. So the scoring, like, it was pretty... It was pretty evenly distributed in the starting lineup apart from Josh Hart and Isaiah Hartenstein, who ended with four points. But regardless, like this was still like this was still a performance that needed improvement because of how the Knicks were shooting tonight. They ended up shooting twelve for thirty-four from three. That's not going to be efficient enough to like 
con- to expect it to make it out of the first round. They need to be a lot better at th- at shooting that three pointer. And the Miami Heat, they ended up they had Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler, but they weren't even the leading scorer. Terry Rozier ended the game with 34 points, and Jimmy Butler ended the game with 17 points. Bam Adebayo ended the game with 15 points and nine rebounds. And that was again that was the only scoring coming in from the Miami Heat. So Terry Rozier's performance ultimately carried the Miami Heat to this win. And it's really something that the Knicks can't afford. You if it was Jimmy Butler, sure, because like it's a little bit more understandable. But Terry Rozier being able to score that many points on you is just not okay. And if he didn't score that many points, then chances are the Knicks would have probably come out winning this game. And it's going to cost them because if this Miami Heat team, they can get hot at any second. So I know I like I continue to like be harsh on them, but the reason why I am harsh is because they haven't gotten hot yet. And this win over the Knicks, it might be what the Miami Heat need to sort of get it going. And you don't want the Miami Heat to get going because then they become a threat to everyone in the playoffs. So that's something that like needs to be con- that should be a little bit concerning if you are the New York Knicks, especially since there is a chance that you could see them in the playoffs, assuming they end up playing the Bucks in the first round and they end up winning against the Bucks in the first round. So that's like their ceiling for them is going to be like making it to the Eastern Conference Finals. I think that's the Miami Heat ceiling. They've done it previously, like they've done it more times in the recent years than any other team has. And their low point would be losing in the play-in. And they honestly, they could do both. They could do either or, and I wouldn't be surprised with um with how the team has been. So those are just those are my opinions on both of those teams. The next game on this list is the Bucks going up against the Wizards. Now, the Wizards, they ended up beating the Bucks 117 to 113, and obviously like when you're the Bucks losing to this really bad team this late in the season, it's not something that you want heading into the postseason because this could carry over. Like I obviously they won't see each other in the playoffs neither of these teams, but Losing to a relatively um, a relatively bad team when you're the Bucks, the second seed, it's not a good look, and it really like it gives teams sort of like the thought that oh we can definitely beat these guys because like the that team is bad and they just lost to them. We're definitely better than that team. So, looking at the box scores, um, Denny Ad Adija again or Avdija, excuse me if I botched that last name, ended the game with 23 points. Corey Kispert ended the game with 27 points. Jordan Poole found his way back into the starting lineup. I didn't really talk about it because, like, I mean, there's nothing much that needs to be talked about. Jordan Poole, like, when he was coming off the bench, he was playing a lot better than when he was starting. So he ended up retaking that starting position because he was playing better. But in this game, he ended with... 16 points and 13 assists so he was really good passing the ball this game but in terms of scoring he was not good which is honestly like I would say it's surprising but it's really not that surprising because he's had these type of um scoring lows pretty pretty often as a wizard so and then Jared Butler ended the game with 17 points 7 of 10 from the field And that was really the only scoring coming in from the Wizards. And that was the only scoring that they really needed because the Bucks, they still seem slow and they still look like they need to figure things out. And ironically, like while I say that um, Damian Lillard is low key, like the cause of these losses, he's also somewhat responsible for their wins because the Bucks, they've only won one game without Damian Lillard in the rotation. And in this game right here, they ended up losing without Damian Lillard playing. Giannis ended the game with 35 points, 15 rebounds, and 10 assists. So, great scoring game coming in from Giannis. Chris Middleton ended the game with 24 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists. And that was the only scoring, like the only real scores in the starting lineup. Michael Malik Beasley ended the game with 5 points. Brooke Lopez ended the game with 6. And Patrick Beverly ended the game with 2. So not really much help coming in from the rest of the Bucks, 
as like they needed they needed Damian Lillard scoring, and I feel like if they had Damian Lillard scoring in this game, they would have ended up coming out on top. So they still need to figure it out as a team because it can't be that like if you have Dame, you have a higher chance of winning. But when Dame plays, like there's a chance that you might that you could lose as well. Like Dame doesn't really bring. It doesn't feel like he brings a drastic difference to their offense. But when he goes out, then you see that drastic difference. And it's like, I don't think that that's how it should be. I feel like Dame should have these dominant performances while Giannis is playing. And it would definitely like boost the rest of the team's morale if he's playing well. Which he usually, he doesn't usually play that well or as good as we see him when he's playing with Giannis. Even though the Bucks have only won one game without Damian Lillard, and it's very odd, like, it puts them in a very odd spot for me, but those are, those are just my opinions on the Bucks. you already know that I see them, like, they could either make it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, or they could lose in the first round to the Miami Heat, those are, like, the two outcomes, like, those are the high points, and that's the low point for the Bucks. if they lose to the Heat again, especially, like, after ga- getting Damian Lillard, because, if you guys remember, like, all the off-season drama, Damian Lillard was expected to sign with the Miami Heat. Or not not sign, but it was expected to be received in a trade. And the fact that he went to the Bucks, they the Miami Heat sort of felt cheated. And it's the reason why um, Jimmy Butler, he had that little, that emo hairstyle that um, that we see on his... Um, on his mugshot for, like, um, for his player profile. Not his mugshot, his player profile, my bad. But... It would be very embarrassing if the Heat end up beating the Bu- the Bucks with Damian Lillard. It would be very, very embarrassing for that team. Now, the next game on this list is the Timberwolves going up against the Houston Rockets. Now, Houston, they were on an 11-game winning streak, but now they sort of cooled off. And they cooled off at a very bad time because they are fighting for that play-in spot. And now the Warriors are winning games. So there might be a chance that they end up missing the play-in spot entirely with how they've been playing recently. Now, the Timberwolves, they ended up winning 113 to 106. And they've been playing really well without Carl Anthony Towns. Rudy Gobert ended the game with 12 points and 14 rebounds. Anthony Edwards ended the game with 21 points. And Nas Reed ended the game with 25 points. And there was not really much scoring coming in from Houston. Jalen Green ended the game with 26 points. Fred Van Vliet ended the game with 22 points. And Jabari Smith Jr. ended the game with 18 points. Again, those were, like, really the only scorers coming in from Houston. So their lack of scoring from the rest of the lineups and the rotation was the big reason why they ended up losing this game. And they really needed this win to sort of, like, keep their hopes alive, in my opinion. But we'll see how the season plays out. Again, like, there's still a couple of games for them. They could make it up. The Cavs ended up playing the Jazz. They ended up winning 129 to 113. Not really much that needs to be said about this game. They they did not have Donovan Mitchell in the lineup yet again. I don't understand what is his problem. He was in the lineup last game, and now he's not in the lineup for this game. But the team ended up winning, so I guess it doesn't really matter. A win is a win. And Evan Mobley ended the game with 21 points. Garland ended the game with 8 points. He's been very slow recently like he hasn't really been scoring the ball as often as we usually are are accustomed to him doing Jarrett Allen ended the game with 21 points and 12 rebounds and Karis Levert ended the game with 26 points so obviously like this was a very good performance coming in from the Cavs and a very good overall team win for them and something that they desperately needed and the last game on this list is the Kings going up against the Clippers and the Kings ended up winning 109 to 95. So big win for the Kings as they needed it to sort of avoid that play-in spot, which it looks like they're the seventh seed right now. So despite the fact that they are like in the seventh seed, they should still be worried about losing to either Phoenix or the Lakers because I could see them losing to either of those teams. I don't really see them losing to Golden State now, even though they did lose to them the previous year. So their lowest point would be to lose in the play-in to either of those teams, and then their highest point is to just you know lose in the first round to Denver. Because I think while they do have the matchups for Denver, 
I think Denver's matchups are just ultimate. They're just ultimately better. I mean, excuse me, hiccups, but Jokic and Sabonis. I think Jokic is going to win that matchup, and then Jamal Murray against De'Aaron Fox. It's a little bit of a more of a toss up, but I think Jamal Murray is going to end up winning that matchup given how he's played. Now the Clippers, they didn't play well at all in this game, and this is you. This is usually around the time where the Clippers start. Um, playing bad and it's like they have that playoff reputation where it's like whatever can go wrong will go wrong and it looks like it's hitting them early and I don't think that's something that this team could afford they were talked about as being one of the favorites and now it's like there's a chance that they might not even make it out of the first round and that's really a scary sight but they do play the Dallas Mavericks in the first round so maybe they'll get lucky because they like they always beat the Mavericks for some reason but with that, we are out of time, and that is a capping off the NBA review. So tune in for the fourth segment where I talk about Vince Carter and Chauncey Billups making it into the Hall of Fame and my overall thoughts on that. So I will be right back after this short break. <laughs> 